Y'all, let's start getting ready. Tonight is the night. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's spread the word around. Let's get ready. Women and wealth creation. It's going to be an amazing time. Tonight. Tomorrow night. And Saturday night. It's going to be three days of empowerment. Three days of empowerment as we explore women and world creation. Women and wealth creation. I'm going to be having two amazing women join me tonight as we explore women and wealth creation. Yeah, let's come together, invite as many people as you know. We're going to be discussing women and wealth creation, and we're going to begin to push for my brand new book. <laughs> brand new book, brand new book. Yes, yeah, so how to create wealth as a career person. Over 500 pages, heavy, school of money reloaded. <laughs> so let's come together. Let's come together, let's come together, women and wealth creation. Wealth is not sexually transmitted. Let's come together, okay, yes, it's 8 p.m. live. 
You're welcome to three days of amazing sessions on Instagram. I'm Olumide Emmanuel. I'm going to be your host for the next three days, 8 p.m. tonight, 8 p.m. tomorrow night, and 8 p.m. on Saturday night. And I'm going to be speaking with six amazing ladies, six amazing women, six amazing Amazons. And they're going to be sharing with me. We're just going to be having a wonderful time of gisting as we explore women and wealth creation. Why are we doing this? We're doing this for three reasons. Number one, I have a new book that I've just written. How to Create Wealth as a Career Person. Massive, massive, massive book. And the book is going to be released on the 31st of this month and on the 3rd of January 2024. So in preparation for this amazing book launch, I'm bringing together a lot of people. Some of them are contributors to the book and I want to spend time so that we can just share and begin to alert to you about this book. Number two, once we step into 2024, we're going to be hosting a lot of events, but there are three major events that will be taking place within the first 60 days of the year 2024. Three major events. The first event will be coming up on Wednesday, the 3rd of January 2024, it's called the Global School of Money Summit, and it's absolutely free. The Global School of Money Summit will be the day of the global launch of this amazing book, and I'm hosting a free event for four solid hours where I'm going to be sharing with you, and you're going to have an opportunity to ask questions and plug into mentorship and also have an opportunity to become a realtor and make money in 2024. So in preparation for that, we're doing this also to create an awareness. The second meeting will be the Entrepreneurship Academy. We're going to be raising 1,000 entrepreneurs in 2024. And we're hosting the Entrepreneurship Academy, a special edition in January from Monday the 22nd to Saturday the 27th of January 2024 for six solid days. We're going to be hosting a thousand entrepreneurs who want to empower you and want to equip you to win in 2024 so that a new breed of millionaires and billionaires and captain of industries can emerge. And that event, we are giving a 90% discount and all you need to do is just to pay 15,000 Naira, you heard me right, for one full week, refreshments, materials, facilitation, everything, just 15,000 Naira for one week. And then the third meeting is the Billionaires Conclave Annual Conclave Summit, which will be coming up on Friday the 1st and Saturday the 2nd of March 2024. It's two days fully residential at the Marriott Hotel in Ikeja. And that one is $2,000 per person, but there's a 50% discount open now that will expire by the 10th of January. So that's the second reason why we're doing this, because of the three major events that we have ahead of us so that you can be able to prepare to take advantage of that. The third reason why we're doing this is because during the event in March, we're going to be having a special session on women and wealth creation. And the issue of women and wealth creation is something that is very, very important for us to discuss so that we can equip and empower people in our world. Because like I've said over and over again, wealth is not sexually transmitted, marriage is not economic empowerment, and your children are not a retirement plan. So joining me today will be two amazing, amazing Amazons, and they're going to be sharing with us. We're just going to be having a chat together and learn so many things together so let me check them out and bring them on board uh so that we can take it from there well 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 let me check out oh uh, so we're gonna do this today and then tomorrow we go on so let me uh, okay
So I'm inviting the two amazing Amazons to join me and then we'll begin to discuss. It's going to be an amazing discussion. So make sure you get your notes ready. Yes, so, yes, so, the one and only TMO. Every other one is a kind <laughs> How are you doing today? Okay. Everybody is on ground. Papa, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you. Good evening, sir. Yes, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Are you prepared for the journey? They are waiting for you on the other side, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, boss, how are you doing today? I'm not hearing you. We need to be sure we are set to go. I'm not hearing you. So let's let's check the sound from your end. Or talk about, can you hear? No, I can't hear. I I I didn't hear anything. Okay, okay. I think maybe you're muted. So boss, we're not hearing okay. you. I've checked it. I'm not muted. Okay, we can hear you now. Now you are. We can hear you now. Okay, good. Yeah. So it must be the earpiece. I'll do without it then. Okay then. So can you hear us? Very well. Very well. Perfect. You're welcome. You're welcome. My two Thank amazing you, guests for tonight. <laughs> so this is going to be hot topic also. I'm the only one man among two women. So you people should be get to. <laughs> <laughs> so you're welcome. Um, like I said before bringing you guys on board, my new book is is getting ready to be released and this is uh it's called how to create wealth as a career person and it's an amazing about 500 pages and the world is waiting so we just want to begin to do a lot of stuff to prepare people for this book and then number two we have a lot of amazing events three major events coming up uh within the first 60 days of the new year so apart from people getting to know about the brand new book um, we also want to get people to know about the events. And then number three, because women and wealth creation is something that we'll be dealing with heavily in the new year. During the Conclave Summit, we're going to be having a session specifically for women and talking about wealth creation. So um, I've come to realize that in Africa, in our culture, a lot of women in their upbringing, in their training, they are trained to grow up expecting that oh you need to grow up so that your husband will take care of you and all those stuff and the men are trained to believe oh you need to take care of your family so one way or the other we've had a lot of women not give the kind of attention that is required to their economic empowerment and to their financial freedom and that has led to a lot of abuse a lot of women have had to endure abuse they are about to stay in toxic environment because they can't do <coughs> They can't parent on their own. So even if they are being abused, they just sit down there. They say, because of my children. And it's really because they can't afford to go. Uh, so, and then right now, we also have a lot of young women, a lot of women that are now becoming very, very empowered. So we, we seem to be having a lot of strong women and weak men, which has become the other side of the pendulum. So the women are now carrying so much load that the guys are just there and the women are saying, look, we are carrying all the load. Well, we didn't sign up for this. So we want to discuss women and wealth creation. You are women. You are involved in, uh, you know, you're married. You are in the marketplace. So that we can just see how we can help people to learn from your journey and from the different things you have learned in life. Uh, and like I've said over and over again, wealth is not sexually transmitted. Marrying a rich man does not make you rich. <laughs> Marriage is not economic empowerment. Getting married thinking that that is your way out of poverty is not going to be sustainable. And then your children are not a retirement plan. So giving birth to children thinking that when they grow up, they will take care of you is not a sustainable policy. So you guys are welcome. I'm glad to have you. So I want to start by, um, I want you to introduce yourself so that the people that don't know you can know you. Tell us what you do. And then I will now starts with the question so let's start with you talk about who are that <laughs> uh, okay so 
um, before starting the live, I told my children, I said, I'm going to go live with my grand mentor. I don't want any noise. Don't disturb me. <laughs> um, I am Tokwe Mark Odige, and I am into wealth creation and people empowerment, using real estate as my tool to achieve this. I believe that the human potential to be wealthy is limitless, that human Human beings are designed to solve problems, and in solving the problem, they acquire wealth. But many people don't know the correlation. So I teach how people can build their wealth and empower themselves. And I use real estate as my vehicle for building this wealth for people. So I play in the real estate space. I'm into site and service. Um, and I feel like every human being is a customer for me. Every human being is going to own real estate, whether you like it or not. You will either live in one or you'll be buried in one. Whichever way, you have a transaction with me. And I think it's better that you start the journey early before it will be too late before you realize that I wish I had known about how important real estate is. So I can verse and advocate for real estate as, an, as a tool for wealth creation and people empowerment. I have been doing this for three years. I started this journey with Dr. Lomide Emmanuel in 2020 after reading the School of Money book and attending the Adesia and Leadership Book Camp and meeting um, a few mentors through that platform. And it's been a transformational journey. Um, over the past almost three years, we have helped over a thousand customers to acquire properties in Nigeria with safety, We've done over a billion naira in transaction, and we have over eight estates. We are launching our ninth estates next year, January. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to share, and I'm looking forward to a very interesting conversation with you, sir. Yes, so my mentees are here. <laughs> Can you see wisdom flowing? You see the way wisdom is just dropping. <laughs> Hope you are taking note. Though. So, boss, over to you. Introduce yourself. Who are that? <laughs> hey, good evening. Good evening once again, sir, and good evening, CMO. Great to meet you here again. Uh, so, my name is Bosa De Rishola <laughs> Obasa. I trained and practiced with Coach newspapers, and that was from 14 years of beautiful journey as a correspondent at the Coach newspapers. There are a lot of other things that I do, but I like to keep it at that for now. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, so um, some people are saying they are not hearing you, but we can hear you. And I don't know what they mean by they can't hear. So if there's anyone that can hear her, let us know you are hearing because some people are saying they can't, but I heard her. So okay. um, so let's walk, let's look at that. Okay, so now we want to look at um, women and wealth creation. So let's start from our background. Okay. So I'll start with you again, Tokwe. Why growing up as a young lady? Um as a young lady, why growing up, even you are even an only child, so you're only say <laughs> So while growing up as a young lady, did you get any training, any teaching, anything about money? Did did your parents, your uncles, your guardians, or or did, did what was your first introduction to the issue of wealth and all those stuff as a young lady growing um, up? For me, growing up, I was um I saw the I, I'm grateful that I had a financially empowered mother. I, I, I don't think that I would even be daring the things I'm daring now if I didn't have a financially empowered mother. So I grew up with a mother that always worked and always earned money. And it was obvious. I knew she had her own money. Um, I also grew up with aunties that were rich. Like I knew they had money. However, I didn't have a formal I didn't have a conversation. I didn't have a conversation with my parents or my mom or any woman on 
how to build my wealth as a woman, how to manage my wealth as a woman, how to multiply my wealth as a woman. I never had that conversation. Even getting into marriage, I never had a conversation with anybody as per, oh, you're getting married now. This is how you should create your financial template in marriage that will not cause conflict in your marriage. Um, the contrary advice I got, which I didn't follow, was I should hide my money from my husband. That was what majority of women that were around me were advising me. Ah, don't let your husband know how much you have. Um, because when he knows, the, he might detect how your relationship would flow. So um, I, I feel growing up, I was blessed to have financially empowered women. Um, I didn't have financial education, but I had financial models that I could look up to. And in marriage, while I didn't have any female mentor that could guide me on how to be a wife and financially empowered, I have had to learn through plenty of books on how to build my wealth and not allow it affect my marriage and how I can have money and still have a good marriage. It's been a journey. Wow. So, Buster, over to you. What was your own experience like growing up? Did they teach you about money? What was? How do you get to know about finances? What was your upbringing like when it comes to finances? Wow, network. Is that network from our side or from my end? I can hear you, sir. So, I think it's from our side. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. So, uh, so I'll, I'll, maybe it's that. I'll bring her back. Okay, let's give her maybe one or two minutes. So, so um, from your own um perspective from what you have seen is there a change in that narrative of women being brought up without having you know clear financial education even not only women even men because the new book i wrote now um even in the introduction of the book that's one of the things i started with talking about the introduction of the book i was the firstborn of my family uh firstborn among 10 people and nobody sat me down to tell they were just saying this oh go to school, mm -hmm. this and that. So middle class family, no, no. So whether it's male or female, do you think that there is a change in that right now? Are people beginning to do that? Um, we don't have enough knowledge yet. Surprisingly, sir, there is knowledge on many things, but we don't have enough knowledge out on financial intelligence and financial education. And um, shout out to you, sir, for all the information. But sir your your books are like your books are like a cyclopedia of money and many people when they see it the the laziness in them will not make them even start reading it and it is so sad that we pay attention to unnecessary things and we don't pay attention to the very important things about life there is no school on money except your own that you have a school of money. Our, our educational sister doesn't, sister doesn't teach us about money. So thankfully, social media now has given opportunity for more people to learn a bit more about money. But still, what they are getting is tits and bits, little pieces and snippets, not from, not from the home. We don't have a financial education instituted within the family. We don't have a family system that ensures that children grow up with a knowledge of finance, of delayed gratification, of financial planning, of assets, of liability, of long term, of thinking in that line. We don't have that on a conscious level from inside the um family system but at least when you come on social media in my social media stream i see a lot of financial education but that also might be a bit wrong because i might be seeing financial education because i am in that space and it might not be this in, yeah. I, i'm seeing it yeah. because it is my industry and some people might not see it at all so i don't want to even believe that we have enough financial education because it has not gone viral it's we need to make financial education get viral because poverty is viral Poverty is viral in the world. Poverty is viral in Nigeria. And the solution is not in prayer. The solution is in education. And prayer has gone viral. At 6 a.m. in the morning, millions of people around the world join prayers. But we are not spending that much time in learning. If we dedicate one hour every morning to learning about financial independence and financial discipline and financial strategy, ah, we will have more money than the way we are spending one hour every morning saying amen, amen, amen. So I believe, sir, that we don't have enough financial education. There's still room for more. And 
I am happy that you are you are mentoring us and leading the course so that we can also follow in the line of educating people on how to get better with their finances. Wow. Um, I'm trying to bring you, I don't know, he's saying that she's unable to join. Let's try it again. Now, um, as a woman, um, I know a lot of women come together. Oh, let's go to the spa together. A lot of women, oh, let's buy this bag. Let's go. Oh, good. Welcome back. Let's buy this bag together. Let's do this together. A lot of women, let's hang out. Let's go to the club for those that are club. Let's go to this party. So, because I know that when guys gather, even though we talk about a lot of things, we still talk about money. I will go blue. I will go make money now. Oh, guys, what's, the, what's happening? What's the latest, you know? What can we do? Because we need, we have expenses. So, when women gather, do you guys gather to talk about savings, investment, wealth creation, growth? And what is the discussion of women like? And if that is not your discussion, why is that not so? Because I believe that as a community, we can help each other so that even if one person is weak, if that becomes our narrative, if that becomes a major thing that we all discuss, it will go a long way in helping us. So from your own perspective, what do you think about that? Topic? Okay. Welcome back. Welcome, Welcome back, back, sis. Um, okay, let me let me deal with this. Um, I am not, I don't know how to have conversation. I don't I don't know how to have idle chats. I, I, I really don't know how to. I've never been. Um, I've also never really been a clique group person. So um, I don't have secondary school bestow, university bestow. No, I don't do those kind of things. And I think it's because I don't share the interest of majority of my mates at the time when I was in that circle. I'm not clubbing. I'm not doing Ashwabi. I'm partying. Those were not my life. So, but... If you are watching me right now and you have a group of friends and you guys do not, as women, talk about financial well-being, you don't talk about financial growth, you don't talk about investments, you are in the wrong circle. You need to either find yourself in the right circle or create a new circle for yourself. And the reason I'm saying that is because um, five years ago, no, seven years ago, seven, eight years ago, I didn't have a circle of friends where we talk about money, but I had a circle of friends that we're talking about self-development. And that circle has grown to the point where we now talk about money, investment abroad, how we are going to, by the time we're 45, we would not need to work. Like, that's the thoughts. Like, what are the things I am buying now that will bring me wealth so that in the next five, seven years, if I don't do anything again, I have residual income that will cover my bills. That's the kind of conversation I am having with my girlfriends right now. We're thinking, okay, we need dollar, we need naira, we need naira that can, we need investment that can bring. So I feel that the beauty of conversations like this for women that are watching is that they will begin to raise their level of expectation of what they should be hearing from their friends and what they should be saying. So I will not, if, if I'm with somebody and you're asking me to buy the latest Ashwabi or buy the latest something, I will know that our friendship is limited. I would reduce the time I'm spending with you. And I would increase the time I'm spending with somebody that is reminding me of how I never even see money in my life. You know, when we are having conversation and somebody is saying, ah, TMO, this is what I did. I saved 600 million Naira last month. Two months ago, I deposited 1 billion and converted it into this. I'll just sit down and say, yo, talk about you have not started. That is the kind of, those are the kind of things I want to be listening to. So if I'm around people that are not talking like that, I'll know that I'm spending less time with them and more time with those talking. We were, I was in Singapore with a group of women. Some women were arguing about are we going on the, the yacht cruise or not going on the yacht cruise? Another group of women were pricing the yachts. How much are we going to buy these yachts? How much are they selling it for? So it means that two people can be having the same experience, but their interpretation oh. is different. How, uh, how you are interpreting it is because of those around you. So in my head, I need to be around those people that will give me a good interpretation of my reality. I'm in Nigeria. 
there is economic crisis. I can hang around women that make it look like, oh, my husband did not buy me hair. My husband did not buy me food. Or I can hang around those that will say, my Valentine birthday, my Valentine gift to my husband was the latest iPhone 13 one terabytes. I mean, iPhone 15 one terabytes. I'll be like, eh, you bought your husband. Okay, let us talk. Me too, I want to be at this level. So it's important that we watch who we are listening to. And I want to celebrate, celebrate everyone that has joined us here because it means that you are seeking knowledge and that is the right path towards growth. Let me let my sister. What's so, oh, boss, welcome back on network. I can see her uh, clearly now. Seems good. So what? A, yeah. So um, I wanted to share with us what was your own um, upbringing like when it comes to financial education. Were you taught from home? When did you begin to learn about financial education? Hello. Wow. This network thing. Oops. This is really bad. Okay. Yeah, it is. So if you are listening to us right now, you are listening to Women and Wealth Creation. My name is Olumide Emmanuel, and joining me tonight is the one and only TMO, Tokbe Mark Odige, and um, Ulushola Obasa, Bosse Ulushola Obasa. And um, they are both my mentees, and um, I wanted to bring in some women to join me this week. Um, we're going to continue tomorrow night again, 8 p.m. Two people will be joining me. Um, I'll be having um, Grace Ofure, um, and I'm also going to be having uh, Victoria Ibawa tomorrow night. Then on Saturday, I'm going to be having um, Binta Max Binije, and I'm going to be having Damlola Azan. So um, it's going to be an amazing time. So make sure you join us. And if for any reason you are in Lagos or Lagos environment, then mark your calendar on Wednesday, the 3rd of January. We're going to be having the Global School of Money Summit. It's absolutely free. And that's going to be the official launch of this amazing new school of money. <laughs> How to create wealth as a career mm -hmm. person. The Entrepreneur's Guide to the World Place. It's a massive book, over 500 pages. It's, a, it's another <laughs> school, but this one is for Canadian mm -hmm. people. <laughs> you don't have to leave your job to yes. become well. I'm, I'm so things. happy you are doing this. Because a lot of I'm people... so, so happy. The yeah. popularity of the narrative, false narrative, that you can only make money as an entrepreneur yeah. is a lie. Is a lie because of our yeah, environment. Yeah. You can, there are people that have made, yeah. they've multiplied their money. I, I was having this conversation with a friend. I said, it is not your income that makes you wealthy. It is what you do with the income. And this book would give yeah. people that are nine to fivers what to do with the income they have so that they are able to convert that revenue into investments that will bring them passive income. You need a template. Don't think yeah. you need to go and form one side yeah. hustle and... Uh, you you have you say, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. All your turnover in one year. <laughs> all your turnover in one year is not even up to the salary of a, a, a career executive. And you say you're mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. So the, the answer is yeah. yeah. So anywhere you are, on Monday, the 3rd of January, find your way to the School of Money. My website and the phone numbers, the, you can go to the website and register. It's absolutely free. Come ready to buy And the they pre-order, sir. And um, yeah, they can start pre-order. That's why I put the number there. You can pre-order. So wherever you are is um, is twenty thousand naira in Nigeria, thirty pounds in London, fifty dollars in America. So anywhere you are, call those numbers, order, and then you will get your copy. And um, everyone that buys the book, there's going to be a raffle draw that day. First prize is a plot of land. Second prize is all expense paid trip to Qatar. And then we have all kinds of other prize: smartphone, washing machine flash screen all kinds of stuff so make sure you get ready uh canada is also 50 dollars so 50 canadian dollars so you can um begin to yeah just register um we're gonna be um it's gonna be live on youtube so third of january is gonna be live on youtube we're gonna be um, streaming on youtube and i'm not sure but i think they said they want to do facebook also so but I think I'm, I'm sure of YouTube at least. So um, let me see. Let me let's see if we can bring Bosse again. I don't know what's happening with network. Um, 
Uh, okay, so um, Tucker, let's move towards marriage now. Um, as a woman, a lot of women get married and because of our culture, because I speak to a lot of men, a lot of men are, they are grooming under the load of, and then you are not just talking of your wife and children, they are bringing their family issue also, and my brother needs money, and my father needs money, and you are like, hello, what is this load that is, you know, and a lot of people now, they are even, you see a lot of people that are not married, one of the challenges this day, because the guy is thinking, hmm, this babe I want to marry, Look at the father, look at the mother, look at all the brother, everybody. If I carry this one alone, though. So even though they love you, they want to marry you, they are looking at the responsibilities that is coming with you, and they are beginning to think otherwise. And then you see a lot of women, they tell you, I'm not bringing anything, I'm the table. Yeah, I am the table. You are like, what are you bringing to the table? You say, I am the table. So the guy is wondering, okay, you are the table. So hey, they what do we do so, from as a woman? Please talk to us because. I don't understand all these women nowadays. You meet a woman. Even this December now, is an error to meet a woman in December. It's an error to meet a woman because you are missing them in December now. It's better to propose, postpone the proposal in January. Because if you try it in December now, you will start saying, you know, Christmas. What are you doing for Christmas? It's expenses, expenses. You are meeting a woman for the first time. You have not, you have not had just, even just the first date. She's talking about my rent has expired. What's my business with your rent? I just met you. Last, less than one month. Your rent expired. And so what? I should come and carry load. So, and the next thing they say, you're not a man. You're not a man. No, I'm not a man because I'm not buying 250,000, 500,000 there for you. When I just met you three weeks ago. So, my sister, <laughs> my daughter, my mentee, talk to us. <laughs> ah. Honestly, I, I would love to, I, you know, I've been talking since and since Sister Abbott says um, um, she's back out. I'd love to hear from her before I go into this particular yes, well, one. Because, because whether you like it or if you don't, you, you, if this network, you will have to come back tomorrow. Ah, because I know. So, boss, let's hear from you. We can. Let's hear from you. I need to hear your upbringing. <laughs> Where did you hear about finances? Were you trained from home? Yeah. How did you get to know about money? Okay, thank you. I hope I'm audible now. Yes, you are. Thank you, sir. I, I totally apologize. I don't know. It's been a really bad network. So I was working on finances or education or wealth creation from home. I, I was, but I still had work experience. Ah, the network is still bad, though. Wow. The network is so bad. Amazing, amazing. And I'm right now on two different um, service providers. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Continue. I think it's, it's getting better. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. So what I was saying, I was, not, I was not trained deliberately intentionally from home. Neither did I also get any other formal training. But we all know we don't get trained on this in school as well. So the fact that you went to school educated does not also help in terms of financial education. So home, all I saw from home were very hardworking parents who also had their own goals, their own challenges, and the rest. So that's as far as home is concerned. But then I got into a profession that expects you to know a little about everything and everything about something. Is the way we usually say journalism, we say, you know, a little about everything and everything about something. But it's amazing, you, even though at a point in my career, I was detailed to cover the capital market, most market. So I'm just, going to, I'm just going to share my own story so you can see that, except one gets intentional, no matter the. Uh, Number wow. of people, it's not, uh, we cannot miss what you want to start sharing now, it's too heavy to be missed. I don't know what we are going to do. Wow, because <laughs> <laughs> what is your program tomorrow? Are you available tomorrow? Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Yes, I'll make it 8 o'clock. 
8 o'clock tomorrow. Yes, maybe I'll just do from office tomorrow because I don't know what the issue is. I do like, <laughs> I do like, this, yes. but today is out of it. Because I don't, I don't want us to miss anything. So, so let's, let's bring you back tomorrow, 8 o'clock. So you will join tomorrow. Okay. So that because the network, the, I'm not hearing, and I don't want us to miss all this heavy, heavy stuff. So let me release you today. We'll continue. Tomorrow, 8 o'clock, we'll start. And All then right. you will join Victoria and then we'll take it tomorrow. Okay, then. God bless Thank you. you, sir. So, Tokpe, answer my question now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sir. Um, so, for me, I feel that women, um, that there are two, there are different categories of people. You meet the people that you, you attract the people that you meet. You attract them to yourself. You don't stumble on meeting people. Your your expectations, what you're looking for. So when when guys tell me, oh, there are no serious women out there, or guys tell me that girls are always asking for money, I'm like, which kind of girls are you approaching? If you are approaching a slay queen, you see a girl that her hair is touching a bum bum. You should already know that your pockets would be empty on top of matter. There's no English language because you already were attracted to superfluous, um, glam kind of people. And if you, what you see is what you get. If you go there, you will enter the one chance and you will spend your money maintaining that lifestyle because you were attracted by the glam. However, there are women who are seemingly in the minority but have their heads screwed on straight. They are responsible. I have mentees that i've known this girl for she's coming to my house tomorrow says she will spend the night she i've known her for the past six seven years in the past five years she has been living alone in lagos about two three years ago she moved into a new apartment and has never begged me for money or begged like she has never she does her job pays her rent she does not have a long hair. Her hairs are short. It's because of the budget, or she carries a natural hair. And she's living within her means. If her rent is coming up, she would do one or two courses. And she, she, she raises the funds to pay her rent, raises the funds to buy camera. She's now doing so well on YouTube. She has thousands of followers on YouTube. And I'm looking at her, I'm so proud, because I knew when she started her business. And I have several of them like that. She, they are single. The guys are looking at them and saying, this one is too hardworking. You are looking for the one that will be shaking bomb bomb following you everywhere. You are not complaining that you are paying for maintenance of the bomb bomb. Didn't you know that it was doctor manufactured one in the first place? Exactly. So I feel that um, while there are some unserious women, there are many serious women, and I'll speak up for the serious ones. Number two is we really should do more in training. Our, we should start changing the narrative of training women to support men. We don't train our women to support men. We train our women to be loved by men and support them emotionally, not financially. So a woman can give you a time. She would massage you, take care of everything. But she doesn't understand. Very few women are brought up to understand the fact that I am, I am also co-responsible for the bills of this house. We are not women are not brought up with that knowledge. They so we need to start changing that narrative because expenses have gone up and men need women to to chime in a little money into what is going on in the expenses of the household, especially if you can afford it. So that is the advocacy that I think we should do more of that. If there is a bill, I was at a, a conference by Mrs. Ibuka Wushika last week, Sunday, and somebody stood up to ask the question and say that, eh, I, I, as a woman, even though I know I'm earning money, I know I'm earning money, but why should I be paying the kind, why should I be using my money to do the things that a man is supposed to do? So the question is, what is a man supposed, a man supposed, to, do? supposed to do? I don't understand though. What is a man <laughs> supposed to do? Eh, a man is supposed to pay house rent. A man is supposed to pay school fees. We, e even if I have the money, why should I be the one? Why should he be expecting me to be the one to pay school fees and house rent? Mm -mm. We're not saying expecting you to pay. We are saying if you can afford it and you can see that he is being burdened by the school fees, support the expenses. Support financially. Your pockets 
and his pockets should join each other. It should not be his own pocket alone that will carry that burden. That is not, we're not trained that way. So we don't have the, we don't think in that line. So even when women are supporting their husbands financially, they don't say it outside. They will say, keep it a secret. And I bless God that I married into a family where my in-laws, husband and wife, were very open about how they collaborated financially. Very, very open about how they collaborated financially. So it, it's, it, it was good for me very early in my marriage to see my brother-in-law say that he took a loan from a bank to build the house. And when the loan finished, his wife put in the money to finish the house and, and do up the entire furniture because she could afford it. They did not hide it from me. It was about, I was three years into marriage when I heard the story. I, it was good to hear that, oh, um, my husband buys the tickets when we are traveling, but I do all the fun inside. Or she would say, I buy the tickets. He would take care of all the expenses and the fun that we have on our trip. So I saw very early in marriage collaborative finance, and I knew it was possible, and I learned not to overburden my husband because I had someone who was doing it and they were doing it well. So I think another problem might be that those who are managing the collaborative finances well, don't talk about it because they, do, they want to preserve the ego of the man. So it would emasculate a man to be, to, for you to come out to say, I paid school fees. It doesn't emasculate the man. The man is still a man whether he pays school fees or he does not pay school fees. The man is still a man whether he pays house rent or he does not pay the house rent. The man is the head of the house regardless of his financial status. Of course, there must be growth in that financial status. I don't want to pay house rent for the rest of my life, but it doesn't make him less of a man. So when we start talking about how we are supporting our husbands, when women start talking about it, other girls will start saying that, oh, this big madam, this big lady I'm admiring. So you meant she was the one that bought the house that the husband is living in and she still respects her husband. That's the real problem. We don't see rich men, I mean rich women, respect their husbands regardless of his finances. We see young girls bow to the men, but we're not seeing the powerful women. So we need more women to speak up. I have loved being mentored by Mrs. Awoshika, Mrs. Um, Tara Feladrotoe, because these women have shown me that you can have money as a woman and you will still be humble with your wife, with your husband. You will still be a wife and submit to your husband. We need to have more of those stories because when we see those stories, you will begin to change the narrative, which is a man has money, a woman supports. That's the narrative we have right now. A man has pays the bills a woman supports with uh, matches I, I buy matches i buy this one that's the small small money we're talking big money we're talking you're sending your child to school in canada and the woman is saying i paid fifty thousand dollars because i want my child to go to school in canada and the husband is there and he's not feeling in any way emasculated he's not disrespected in any way he's still honored even though we are hearing the side of the story that needs to go viral Ha, you are shaking the table. <laughs> okay, so now where then do we, you see, I don't want to go spiritual, but you see, two has become one. We are supposed to be one family. So if we are supposed to be one family, where do we now get this idea of your money is our money, my money is my money? If we are one family, are we not supposed to come together and have joint knowledge, joint planning, and joint spending? So as a woman, where do you get that idea from? Because people are still fighting you now. They're already commenting. I don't agree. I don't agree that if the woman is going to share, then she should also share the FC. I, I don't think we are getting... So where is this? If two has become one, and we are building one family, because sometimes they say, hey, the woman is the one doing everything. Would you rather that nobody is making money in that family? The man is not lazy. He's working. He's doing his job. Let's say the man is earning. You got married to him. The guy was earning 450. You were working, you were earning 250. And the guy is doing courses over a period of time. His salary is increasing, but now you 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 are on LinkedIn, you get pushed, a multinational employs you, and then you go to a multinational and boom, your salary becomes 
and the guy that you married that was earning 450 is now earning 1.1. So he's growing. He has grown from 450 to 1.1 in the course of four years. But you have shifted into a multinational where the payment scale. Now you are two point something. So does it now mean that you should be the head or that the man is no more a man? And then so how do we deal with all these things? Because you are a woman. Help us understand. Okay, so uh, how many of these things am I going to deal with? Uh, so first, majority of our marriages, the two have not become one. The two are still two. Mm. They did not become mm. one. Mm. They did not become one except when mm. they are in bed. The only time they become one is in that mm. few seconds they are together in bed. That's all. So when we think mm. or quote scripture that the two have become one we are quoting a scripture that is on a spiritual level but in the real terms of marriage the two have not become one the man is not discussing his financial decision most men don't discuss their financial decisions with their wives they don't discuss their investments with their wife they don't discuss their debts with their wife when they are owing money and they don't discuss their earnings in entirety with their wives so when we assume the two have become one we have made a big big colossal assumption that will now lead us into making wrong conclusions so um if the two mm. have truly become one then the conversation is not is not as complicated so, um mm. fiki baby said that um tara and tfd and mrs a have good supportive husbands that fan their flames now that is when to become one when to become one my husband is amazing like he supports every if i want to fly he's going to say where do you want to go to the moon jupiter is there now why are you going to the moon tmo you can do much more than that let's go to yeah. Yeah. so why would i want to have why would i have money and hold it back from such a person why would he hold back money from me my glory makes him shine brighter his glory makes me shine brighter because we are one so when we are truly one, the conversation is different. The challenge is we don't have a system that truly makes husband and wife become one. Our, many men have trauma from how they were raised. Many women have trauma from how they were raised. When they come together, both of them are carrying those trauma into the marriage. They never actually become one. They are just there with their bag. They are looking behind the scene. I was advised by aunties not to tell my husband how much I was making. But thank God I went to a church where my marriage counseling unit was clear in that you are not, you must not carry what they told you into this marriage because you are carrying their own trauma and using it to color your own marriage. I'm grateful to God for that advice yeah. because it meant I had to drop all the things they were saying and dealing with my husband at face value. I was told, you are mine and a do man. They are egoistic. They have too much ego. You can, they, they are not humble. They will not support you. If I listened to those people, I would not see my husband. I will see, I will see their own version of them yeah. instead of seeing who the man really is. So sometimes we bring in these baggages. This is how my father was. This is how my uncle treated this. And then we make it color our marriage. So we are not even entering the marriage. There are like 16 of you in that marriage. You cannot become one. I like, you need to first drop the eight people that are speaking in your ears. Your husband needs to drop the five people speaking in his ears. Because it is when you drop all those speaking into your ears that you can then become two individuals that will become one. So that for me is the bedrock of that unifying force. My when I went into marriage, my money was my money. That's the truth. My money was my money, but when there was a need, it was not. It was in, there was no question. When there was a need, and the money is in my account, pew, I pay. It was not a conversation. I would not want my kids to be embarrassed in school, and I have money in my account. We, we, we hear those stories where women would watch their children stay at home for one, two weeks, and they would not pay the school fees because they are waiting for the man to collect his salary. That's terrible. That's wickedness. That is not marriage. You are supposed to step in if there is an issue, if you operate on a separate account system. There are different systems that work for different couple. You must find a system that you both yeah. agree with, and it will change over time. I've, I've, I've been married for 13 years. 
the way I operated in the first three years, even for the way I operated in the first five years, in the last three years we have been doing real estate, the system has changed. My husband's business took a different turn after COVID. The finances have changed. So our financial model keeps changing based on our cash flow per time. We we'll look at it and say, okay, this is what we are going to do because the two have become one in the true sense. So I think it is important that when people, uh, singles are watching this, they don't take it and think that, oh, TMO is saying I should make money and, and support my husband. So who will not support your husband? If the person is your husband, why will you not support him? Do you, want, you want him to die of hypertension and then you become a widower. When God has blessed you, the word is for such a time as this. I had that message, um, it was in 2018. I got a contract makeup job and I made money and it was really good money. And I was feeling like, oh, all this money in my account, what would I do? I didn't even know real estate investments that time. So I was looking at the money and my husband had a tech business that he needed investment. And I was looking, I did not think of putting my money in his business. I was looking at the money and wondering what would I do with it. And then I listened to a message by FFA, Reverend Funke Felix Adejumon. And she said, sometimes God will raise you as a woman for such a time as this. He said, because sometimes women are thinking the breakthrough of their family financially lies in the man when it is actually in your pockets. I had that message that time and I invested the money in that business. I have gotten hundreds of fold investment from my husband in my business right now. But then he needed that little money. It was a seed. It has given me multiple in terms of harvest. I heard that message again in 2020 when my sister-in-law challenged me that talk where you have much more than what you have. That was 2019, December. She said, why are you like this? You are waiting for Mark. Don't wait for Mark. This is what I did. This is how I spurred on my husband. You might be the one that will spur Mark on. Then I went back home and listened to Reverend Funke Felix Adejumo's message again. You are, you might be the breakthrough for your family. Because I also got into the place, space when I was thinking my husband is the breakthrough. And I was praying for him. And instead of me praying for myself, I will even pray for myself. I will be praying for him. I looked at myself that if I do make up, before I will see one million, oh my, my God. But him, one day, he can just, one contract can bring him 20 million, 50 million. So let me not even bother praying for my own makeup career. Let me just spend my entire prayer on his business. One, it, this, it, it was a better prayer point. So I was spending time praying for him. And in the middle of those seasons, my sister-in-law challenged me that you are smarter than what you are bringing into the table. And as God will have it, from that season we went into COVID, I got in touch with you. I read School of Money, met my mentors, and I listened to Dr. Um, Reverend Funke Felix Adejimo. And it occurred to me that maybe TMO, you are the re, you are the key to the financial breakthrough of the Odike family. Maybe you, if you open your eyes and release yourself, your, the Makodike family will change. And the truth is that was what happened when I broke free from that mental block that my husband is the financial breadwinner and is the solution. And I told myself that God, if it is going to be me, use me fully. And I willingly went into the work. Our finances changed through me at first. And one year after Mr. Mark was watching and supporting me, phew, his finances changed. So imagine I did not step up. Imagine I kept thinking he was the solution. He was the breakthrough. He was the breadwinner. He would, we would just, both of us would be suffering. We would be suffering, waiting for the next person to take responsibility. I had to take responsibility. And that changed our game, changed our finances, changed our story. And I probably this is the first time I'm sharing this story in a social media platform yes. like this. I've never actually shared this, but I think that I, I know this topic is too strong. We have so many women that they need to step up and they are breakthrough. They are, they are married to good men who are just going through a season and they are the key to the next season of financial growth for their family, but they will continue to give excuses. Wow. <laughs> wow. I wish women would listen to what you have just said. You have no idea what you have just said and how transforming this information is because a lot of people, especially with reference to the trauma, a lot of people have all kinds of baggages, all kinds of programming that have become a software running their life. 
I don't want to go through, I don't want any man, I can't get no man, what my mother went through in the hands of my father. The man is not your father. Why would the man suffer for what your father did to your mother? I can never trust any woman. All these women, all these women, that's how my mother, what is this? We, we're bringing all kinds of trauma and then people go to church, they claim to be Christian, they read the Bible, but their life is completely off. So when you said, so the trauma issue is number one, number two, two are not one. And that is just a major revelation that has said to this. Because if that's one, I keep wondering, I say, where do people get all this idea from? The, the most important thing is for money to enter the family. Anyhow, you can't, you can't. Why are we having this issue? But if two is not one, it's true. We'll tell us all. If two is not one, we're just joking. That's a dangerous assumption. And then everything will go mm -hmm. from that point. Wow, that is amazing. So let me try to educate people just to throw this out there to help you. If you are someone that believes in God like I do, God is the one that ordained marriage. And in order to have marriage the way God expects it to be done, you have to do it according to the principles of God. One of the challenges we have is the fact that the Bible itself was written within a patriarchal culture. So many of the things in the Bible is passed across from a patriarchal dimension. And then you are now living in Africa mm. where we are in a patriarchal culture. So the churches and the pastors, not many of them are globally exposed. Not many of them are trained to understand biblical exegesis. So even in the interpretation and in the preaching of the church, they have preached marriage and preached the message also from a patriarchal yeah. dimension. And then because of the level of abuse that women have gone through and they have had to, you know, I was, I was in an interview uh, with Kingsley recently, I just went viral recently, and I was sharing on when they say, our mother stayed in marriage for 50 years. I said, no, they didn't stay married. Many of those mothers, they never had sex for 15 years, 18 years. Why do you think they have mommy's room, daddy's room? It's because they were living their separate yeah. lives. They were just there because mm. of the children. They were enduring all kinds of abuse, enduring all kinds of stuff. And then you, you begin to see that these things have affected many people. Mm. And you keep wondering, so if you are someone that believes in God, let me help you understand this. When you come together in marriage, it doesn't mean you all have to have one account where you put all your money inside. No. But what God expects you to have, when we say two has become one, is yes. unity. That means, number one, you must have joint mm. knowledge. There must not be any money in that family that somebody is not aware of. Your husband must know everything you have. Your wife must know everything you have because life happens. I'm into real estate. I'm into investments. There are people that have invested with us. They have died. Nobody to come and collect the money because then we can't. A woman still died recently, and this woman invested money, and she still has some substantial money. And then she came at the point wanted to collect. She said, "Come and collect us." He said, "No one house." Okay, what do we do? He said, "Just be patient. We're paying her every month." Then about a few months ago, someone contacted us that she's dead, and that uh, uh, she's dead. And that she noticed that there's a money she normally collects every month from us. That means she must have something with us. That so, what is the detail of the something? I say we don't know you. We cannot be discussing detail of anything with you. Say, hey, but she's there. I say, okay, bring probate letter, bring everything. So I called the officer. I said, go and check her form. Whose name is on the form? As best as next of kin. Two names were on the form. We called one name is a pastor. Or is a pastor? Maybe I, I don't know. One name is a pastor. Whether he's a pastor, so we call the pastor. I say, okay, let's start. The second name is supposed to be a husband because they bear the same name. So I say, okay, maybe this is the husband. I say, let's not call husband first because the one that this person is calling and saying she's the sister, maybe they are divorced. So let's not go into marriage. Let's start with the man of God. By the time we call the man of God, he says he's not even aware of what we are talking about. <laughs> That is not aware what we try. So when you don't allow, I can tell you stories upon stories of men that have died with money, their family is suffering and money somewhere. So number one is joint knowledge. You must know everything. No secrets. Number two is joint planning. Joint planning. You need to sit down together to plan your finances. Okay. The, what do we do? How do we do this? How do we do that? How many people are not ready for this? 
because they are not one. But if you want to have real family, I'm telling you, this will help you. And then number three is joint decision. So you can plan jointly and then one person can know joint decision. So when we joint knowledge, joint planning, joint decision, it will go a long way in helping your family. I was speaking at an event years ago and this, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why I keep calling her elderly woman because I was in my, I'll be like, yeah, I was in my early 40s, but the woman is in her, she's like, I, I think she's 59, so maybe she's like 15. So I was like, well, I was sitting down there and then I, I spoke at the event and then she spoke after me. But I just love that. You know how you just see some of these elderly women, you know, gray hair, but looking very, like, ah, let me hear what this woman wants to say before I go. When this woman started speaking, my God, she said she grew up in a family where her father did not have money. The mother was the one that was working and doing business, and the mother took care of the father, sent him to school, you know, paid the school fees. The guy graduated, got a good job, and started carrying women. Before you know it, one child, another child, that the woman, the mother, so she told herself, never in my life. Come on. We lie over her life so to take me through all this. So she said she got born again, but that thing was in her head. Then she said she now got married to a good Christian man, a lecturer in UI. They got married, and she was already working in a bank. The guy is a lecturer. So banker salary is more than lecturer salary. So the guy in their pre courtship, the guy is a so the guy said that's the first time she had. That the guy that said, well, we are getting married. What's the plan? That this how much I earn, and how much do you earn? What do we do? That where you are living now? That I'm a lecturer. I'm living on campus. Will you want to come into campus, or do you want us to go and get a house outside? Because that place you are living is far from campus where I work. And where you know the, the guy was talking correct planning, and she was like, ah, what kind of? Because she has never had anybody other kind of decision with that. And then in her head, she's like, hmm, the guy wants to take my money. You know, that's in the script. Uh, uh, this is what you're asking. You say, why are you asking for how much do I earn? Ah, we are going to get mm. married. Uh, we need to know how much is coming in so that we can plan and live within our means. But if you are not comfortable, it's no problem. I will do what I can do. Say, no, say so, that you know that until they got married, she didn't tell the man how much she was earning. But the guy went ahead, did everything, and then the guy was too good. And then they kept on like that. She was keeping her money, trying to gather money to say, I want to do this, I want to do that. But guess what? Two years into the marriage, the guy gets a offer to go to London, get a clinical professorship, whatever. The guy now says, well, I'm going to London. I want us to relocate. I'm going to be there for two years. Do you want me to go or do you want me to stay? If you want me to stay, I will stay. Family is more important. If you want us to go down, you have to leave your job. We are going. She just thought, okay, London. So they got to London. She was still holding on to that mind, though. Gathering money. The guy got to London. She said that's where that she cried that day. That there are men that are so good, but you can allow your experience to mess up a good man. Say the man never one day ask her how much do you earn. The guy just does what he can do and stays with the very good Christian man. Say they got to London, my sister. The guy got into the place, got a job, opened an account, joined that wow. account with two cards because she was not working. When they got to London, they say, ah, that this is my salary, oh, that I have opened an account, oh, this is the ATM card, oh, I have one, you have one, it's joint account, this is the PIN number. But please, anything you are spending, make sure this is the mortgage, this is uh, my transport money, so just make sure you don't spend... You know, so that at least I'll be able to have money to buy travel card. He said the guy gave her everything, every as in this everything that the that she she just started crying. That can there be men like this? That she's like what? So he said no, but you are not. You are my wife. Everything I have belongs to you. Is our money? She said the next day she told us from today, everything I have, me and this man together forever. She said when she made up her mind that within two weeks, she got a job. They started planning together that in less than a year, they bought their land in Ikoi, in Nigeria, wow. Ikoi. <laughs> so she was telling us also that, so, that the property they have now is billions. 
But all those properties, they bought it when they were in London and they were sending money to buy land in that. Today now, people wonder, all oh, these lecturers, where are they getting money? But it was those things that if she has not done that, she was trying to buy one plot alone. She couldn't achieve it for three years. When she joined the man, all of a sudden, things opened up. So I pray and hope that what we are hearing today will really help us and really change a lot of things for us. And um, well, thank oh my God, let me quickly um, say something about so, your joint. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, please, everybody should register our Billionaires Conclave in March. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say something about the joint knowledge and joint decision. And I'll give you in a practical sense. Hey, me. Hmm. When people come on Instagram and they're like, oh, TMO, your husband is so lucky. Or come on Facebook, you are so, you, 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 you are so fine. You're so smart. Your husband is a blessed man. I say, oh, it will take a blessed man to marry me because I can be headstrong. I am very opinionated. So it takes a lot of patience and out of character behavior for me to have to seek my husband's agreement on what I'm doing. It means that I'm not behaving like Tokwe, I'm behaving like Mrs. Mark Odige. It means I must tell myself that I have to get his buy-in. I love to travel. He doesn't really like traveling much. For me to travel, I need to explain in detail what is the opportunity for me in my trip. How am I going to make what the money I'm going to spend, how would it come back? How is it an investment? So it means that I cannot just say, but it's my money, I'm traveling anyhow, which some women will do. You get away with it, but you're not married. Yeah. You are losing your marriage mm. in you saying, it's my money, I can travel, you don't want me to travel, that's why you're holding me back. No, he wants you to explain the advantage of your traveling. That is joint yeah. decision. So I need to let him yeah. know that, okay, when I travel, then I'll do makeup training, now, I'll tell him, when I go to Dallas, I will host a training. When I go to Houston, I will host a training. I will meet people. And then I now share with him, when we went to UK, you know, when we went to UK, I sold to the two people I met. So he understands the advantage. So I have to now carry him along on the planning I have made to aid our unified decision by breaking it down. Because I am funding my trip, doesn't mean I should say I am paying I'm going. And because I'm fine does not mean I should see his question as locking me up. No. Yeah. He is not locking me at home. He's trying to understand and guide me to make it a better decision. If I remove my yeah. arrogance and now have money hats and wear my humble wife submissive hat, I will listen to him, have a conversation. Our decision, my decision will be a better decision if I listen to him and follow his line of thought. But if I don't, I can still do what I want to do. Like our mothers of those days, they will not divorce, but in that marriage, they are no longer one. They are just living roommates yeah. at the end of the day. So joint decision is yeah. not easy to make. Joint planning is not easy. It might be painstaking. It might be slow, back and forth. But if you stick to it, your marriage and your finances will be better off if the two of you become one. Yeah. Amazing. So, if you are listening to us, the book. call this number now. This this is the book, How to Create Wealth as a Career Person. It's over 500 pages, so you have to bear with me. <laughs> Somebody said it's too big. It's, it's another school of money, so you have Be to really it. By and too. then on Wednesday, the, on Wednesday the 3rd, Wednesday the 3rd of January, we're going to be having the global school of money summit it's absolutely free so you need to be there if you're available and then the book will be launched that will be the global physical launch of the book and then um if you buy the book also you have an opportunity to win some amazing gift first prize is a free plot of land second prize will be all expense paid trip to qatar uh third prize and fourth and fifth all the way to 10 prizes will be available for that day so Make sure you get it. In Nigeria, it's 20,000 Naira. In London, it's 30 pounds. And in North America, it's $50. 50 Canadian dollars, 50 American dollars. So get the book. Call the numbers on the screen. Register. The location is Lagos. Railboat Auditorium in Lagos. So get the book. Um, no, it's not on Amazon. I don't do Amazon. I do a little bit of <laughs> 
So go to libidemanet.org and you get it. Um, and when you call the offices, they will tell you how to get it anywhere. Our office is in London. Our office is in Houston, Atlanta, New York. We have office in Canada. We have in Australia. We have in Italy. We have in Ghana. We have in South Africa. So we all you can see why you should join the Union Company. Me too. In the next few years, I'll tell you. <laughs> we have offices in London. We have in America. We have in Canada. We, in Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs> yes, so so uh, just call those numbers on the screen. Contact the number. Every information you need. You get from there. So there are three meetings that you need to be a part of. Number one is the free school of money on Mon on Wednesday, the third of January. The second one is the Entrepreneurship Academy, Monday 22nd to Saturday 27th. It's six days. I'm going to be training you. Want to train 1,000 people and empower you to be powerful entrepreneurs in the new year. And we're going to be having a lot of speakers. Papa will also be there to speak. So, Shay, you'll be yes, back. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 22nd to 27th. So, we're going to, so, and that means we are giving 90% discount. So, you pay just 15,000 naira. 15,000 naira for one full week. Because we don't want to make it free so that we'll be sure of who is coming. Because if we make it free, we won't know who is coming. I won't know how to prepare. So, we said, let's just do 15,000 so that number one, we'll be sure you are a serious minded person. Number two, we'll be able to have a data to plan with. There's going to be refreshment every day. Refreshment for six days, you don't see 15,000 of you. Then all the speakers, all the facilities, you're going to be getting materials. And then we have up to $5 million grants available to support people. There'll be mentorship. We just want to help people. So that's the second visit. Then the third one is the Billionaires Conclave, first and second of March, 2024. You cannot afford to miss this one. And it's $2,000 for the two days fully residential. But we are doing 50% discount now. So make sure you call those numbers and register. Then we'll meet. So our speakers, the conclave, the theme for next year is cracking the global billionaire's code. Individuals, families, organization. So Tara Feladrote will be around. She's going to be handling the session on women and wealth creation. She will be around. He's going to be talking to us about wealth creation opportunities in the tech world all the different world, the global wealth opportunities in the world of technology. And then um, Timothy Oladi Pupo Clement will be there, will be talking to us about the power of the vision board, how to create your vision board for wealth. And I'm going to be there talking to you on how to crack the global billionaire's code and how to create a lot of wealth in different areas. And one unique thing we are doing for this year, 2024, is because of this book, How to Create Wealth as a Career Person, I want a lot of career people to come. So we are having wealth, kingdom wealth in the evening. It will be absolutely free for two days. So I'm bringing Joshua Selman. So myself and Joshua Selman, we handle the evening session. It will be free. And we're going to be launching the book again so that those that couldn't come in January, you come and get the book and we can help a lot of career people. Now, even though the evening meeting is free, it's VIP invitation. So you need to go to the website now, register. We're going to screen you because the hall can take only 450 people. I want to screen to be sure that it's serious-minded people that are ready to make a difference and transform our nation and our continent that will be there. So, Tokbe, in wrapping up, I'd like you to talk about the importance of mentorship, how the books and the mentorship has helped you, and let people see why they should maximize this opportunity. Uh, okay. So, there's a story I told about, you know that um life is about the intangible things um you need to be in the right rooms there's something about the room where you are you need to be in rooms that challenge you you need to be in rooms that inspire you being in the billionaires conclave challenges and inspires me both at the same time i see people who are building legitimate wealth and i'm inspired that it is possible i see people that are younger than me that are mentioning how much they need and i'm challenged to want to do it so um if you are looking for an environment that will it is going to cost you but it's not even costing you much that's the truth i have paid for several programs you you, can, you have to value knowledge if you want to grow so you must put money into getting knowledge so the one thousand um, dollar which is about one million 1 1.2 right now is an investment that is worth it so i'll share this story um 
I was trying to raise funds a few months back, so I did get 50%, I mean 200% uh, return on investments. And I got a phone call. I put, I advertised it on social media that if you invest with Red360, you make 200%. And Dr. Lumide called me. Talk <laughs> I said, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, how are you going to pay 200%? Sir, you did not remember you called me. Ah, uh, you have forgotten. I know, I remember. He said, how are you? Are you the one that said you will pay 200%? I said, yes, sir. He said, how? And I explained to him. And while I know he didn't entirely agree, I broke it down. And he said, okay. Because I made him understand what I was using the funds for. What am I saying? As you, as, you, as you aspire for bigger, greater heights, there will be things that you need people to call you out on, that what you are doing, don't do it. What you are doing, stop doing it. And you need to have people around you that can call you out like that. Someone that has your interest that will see what you're doing and say, hey, this way, it looks good, but it leads to destruction. Don't follow that path. Um, so mentorship with Dr. Lumide Emmanuel, you know that it's someone that has your interest, someone that, I, if I send him a text message, he always replies. If I call him, he would always answer. I love the gift of access. I don't take it for granted. I am grateful for the opportunity to bounce my ideas and ask for um, knowledge. And when, when, the secret, when the secrets was to be open, I will go to my secret place. I call Dr. Lumide that I don't understand what's happening though, please. We need to pray because the account is not accounting. <laughs> I'm not understanding what is happening. And there is renewed hope after those sessions because I know that um, I will get peace in my spirit to go ahead and do what I need to do. So I feel like it's a good community to be in. If you are thinking in terms of the, um, oh, the lecture, leave the lecture, just soak in the ambience of who you are around, where you are, and expect the change to happen. It will happen. It will happen. So if you are looking for billions, join yes, the billionaires sir. conclave. Yes, so and get your copy. Order now. Call the number pre-order now. <laughs> and get your so tomorrow yes, night we'll do mm -hmm. it again. Tomorrow we have Grace Ofure, we have Bosse, Olushola Obasa, and we have Victoria Ibawa. So it's gonna be three tomorrow. Three of them mm -hmm. will come. Eight eight PM tomorrow night. Women. And wealth creation. So thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. God bless you. Take care. So God bless you all. Thank you. So copy the number on the screen. Copy those number on the screen. Contact the office. Go to the website. And if you want to be part of the mentorship platform, just go to the website, the Billionaires Conclave, and the events next year the third of january wednesday third of january is taking place at railboat auditorium in the demo it's absolutely free 9 a.m to 1 p.m four hours i'm going to take you on three sessions four hours i'm going to be launching the book the entrepreneurship academy from monday the 22nd to saturday the 27th is for six days and we're giving you 90 percent discount it's just fifteen thousand naira. same venue Railboat Auditorium in Idimu. And then the Billionaires Conclave Summit for 2024, 1st and 2nd of March at the Marriott Hotel GRA in Kenja. And that one is $2,000. But there is a 50% discount going on right now between now and the 10th of January for you to pay just $1,000. So thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm going to save this video on IGTV now. Uh, those of you that are abroad, just contact those numbers, send us your details so that we can give you the link where we'll most likely open up a Zoom for those that are abroad. But go and register and let us know you're abroad. Maybe we'll do Zoom, but we're definitely going to have, um, have it broadcast on YouTube. So um, copy those numbers, go to the website. Those two numbers are your gateway. Any question you have, we'll be ready to answer your question. So tomorrow night, Let's do it again, 8 p.m. tomorrow night. God bless you all. I'm going to save this video now so that you can go and watch it over and over again and go to my YouTube channel at Dr. Lumide Manor on YouTube and get more information. God bless you all. Bye.